Hi everyone, I'm Ben. Welcome back to the Data Literacy Video Channel. In this tool tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to use Code Interpreter, a new alpha plugin for ChatGPT by OpenAI. Now, I just got access to this plugin recently and people are still on the wait list for it, but I wanna show you how we can use it to analyze data. Uh, and so let's, without further ado, dive right in. Okay, so here we are in ChatGPT, as you can see. Now I've selected this model up here called Code Interpreter Alpha. What is this model? It's an experimental model that can use Python and handles uploads and downloads. Let's try it out. We're gonna give it a little test flight using, no pun intended here, air traffic passenger statistics from data.gov. This is an open data CSV file that gives us passenger counts into and out of San Francisco International Airport for a little over, I guess, 15 years, maybe something close to that. And so you can see I just downloaded the CSV. Here's what it looks like if you open it up in Excel. You can see the data goes back all the way to 2005 up until last February. There we go. That's the data we're talking about. It gives us the airline, whether it's domestic, international, the region the flight came to or went to, whether people got on the plane or off the plane or just stayed on it, uh, whether it's low fare or not, the terminal, the boarding area, and then crucially, column L, the passenger count, how many people were on all these flights that month according to these attributes. Okay, so there it is, not a particularly dirty data set. We're not gonna do anything uh, considerably advanced in terms of the analytics. Let's just give the tool the ability to play with the data and see what we find. So how do we begin? Well, we click this icon in the left of the send a message prompt line, and you can see it's a little file icon with a plus in it. So as soon as you click on that, you're opening up a file folder here and you can select your CSV, which I've done, and then open it. And immediately what ChatGPT does is it recognizes the file name and it says, great, it looks like you've uploaded a file named air traffic passenger statistics.csv. Let's take a look at the contents and then it opens up this working uh, window here. And if you drop it down, you can see that it's writing Python. It's importing pandas and it's loading the CS file in, uh, into a pandas data frame, and it's displaying the first few rows. There we go. And so this is what the outcome is, and it's now giving me this response that it tells us what it includes, and it goes about telling me the column name headers, and then inferring some information uh, about those columns and what data they contain. Note that I did not give it metadata. It did not refer back to the source on data.gov. It guessed about what these columns were all about, which of course might be susceptible to error. Of note, for example, it noted the activity period is likely month and that it noted the format, YYYYMM formats, right? I didn't tell it that. All it did was it took a look at this column and it made that guess. It happens to be correct, but we don't know if it always will be. At the end it says, please let me know if there's anything specific. Now, I've never really done this and I don't really know exactly how to prompt uh, this particular plugin to analyze the data. So let me just kind of describe, I don't know how I would have thought about it. And let's start with something very general and generic. Let's just say, can you tell me descriptive statistics uh, of the data and also create some basic charts and graphs that help me visualize what is in it and any patterns it may contain. Very, very generic kind of non-specific request. Let's see what the heck it's gonna do. Well, it starts by impo importing matplotlib.pyplot, okay? And then it's starting with giving me some variables. It's gonna create a bar chart with a number of passengers per operating airline and filter it to the top 10. It's gonna make a bar chart showing the number of passengers by region. Okay, so it's starting off with a lot of bar charts. It's even gonna be a pie chart here, telling me the type of activity code. Okay, and then it's gonna output all of that in the descriptive st statistics. Okay, so, and now we see that it starts to create that output. All right, so we see you know a pretty good usage here of part to whole uh, data in the form of a three slice pie chart. Now it's gonna go to the next level after it creates these charts. I see that a lot of United flights, a lot of US-based flights, right? And then it's gonna give me a bit of a description here of some descriptive statistics rather, telling me the period, it's giving me the passenger count, 
how much it varies, what the mean and standard deviation are of those rows about passenger counts. And then it's giving me a description of the charts. What are they telling me? A bar chart showing the top 10 operating airlines by passenger count, right? And then uh, it's going to save this uh, conversation over here as air traffic data analysis. Okay, so there we have it, right? So let's get a bit more specific. What if we take this one right here? Let's modify it. Maybe I want to think about pivoting this 90 degrees to show these as horizontal. Let's see if we can do some different modifications to that as a next step. Say, so can you modify the uh, top 10 operating airlines bar chart for me? I'd like to see the bars horizontal. Make them gray for me, please. As a Canadian, I'll say the please in there. <laughs> and can you add data labels to the ends? of each bar, making sure to add the thousands separate. So I'm going to see if it's going to make a modified bar chart for me. Well, it's going to start off by declaring that's what it's going to do. All right. And then we can see it's going in here, creating our access labels, creating our title. Now it's adding this for loop in here that I think essentially adds the thousand step separator. Okay, and it's inverting it, and here's what we get. And then it's giving us my data labels over here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. But is it correct? You know, is this accurate? I mean, that's a key question for LLMs, isn't it? We're not exactly sure yet if it's right. If we know that there's problems maybe with its ability to do math, and it's not great at numbers, but it is great at code. So let's see if these numbers come out true. I've uploaded the data set in Tableau. We're going to take operating airline. We're going to take passenger count and sort it. All right, we're going to add this passenger count to the label field. And now let's compare it. So 350,000 uh, million, rather, 350 million, 170,993. That's the same number we get over here for United Airlines at the top. There's another United Airlines line here for a different time period, I guess, before July 1st, 2013. That number comes out to 210,727,000, which is the same exact number we get here when we analyze the data ourselves with Tableau. 118 million, 110 million, 94 million, 118 million, 110 million, 94 million. Looks like it's checking out. So this is certainly a lot better than what I saw as some additional attempts that didn't include this code interpreter. Because again, it's not using data. I mean, I'm sorry, it's not doing the numbers itself. It's creating code to, to do that. And so the, the analysis is being done within Python with our data fully uploaded, right? Now, what if I wanted to combine these? This happens all the time in, in the analysis workflow, doesn't it? You know, we see things like this, we get into the middle of it and we realize, wait a minute, maybe I want to see these combined. Can we do that? Let's try it. So uh, let's say, can you, I'm going to say, can you combine the two uh, levels of operating airline that both include United Airlines. And then I'd say, I'd like to see those levels of the variable, right? Mind so that it's just shown as United Airlines. Let's see if it can figure that out. I mean, I don't think my request is super articulate or eloquent. You know, I'm not 100% confident that I've clearly explained what I want it to do. But let's see what it does. Um, you know, what I find interesting is it first starts by combining at the very beginning at the top here. What is it doing? It's combining United Airlines using this, uh, using this, essentially this if statement, right? If it finds United Airlines in it, then you know include it. Otherwise, don't. Now it re after it does that, what does it do? Re uh, calculates the top ten, and then it goes ahead and makes the bar chart. Let's see what we get get here. Okay, so now it has both United Airlines with five hundred and sixty million up top up here. Let's see what happens in Tableau if we combine these two together. We're going to see. Do we get five hundred and sixty million as well? Let's sort it. 560 million. Yes, we do. Okay, so it did that math correctly. I find that fascinating. You know, it did that modification. It cleaned up the data. 
combine them in that way here on the fly using a very awkwardly worded command. Maybe I only want to see this for domestic, not all. Um, let's just say, can you can you redo the bar chart? This time only showing the top 10 airlines filtered by domestic flights, not international. Now, I didn't specify that this is called geo summary is the name of that variable, right? I didn't say anything about geo summary. What do I mean? Geo summary, that's right here, geo summary, domestic international. But watch, it's smart enough to go in there and say, okay, well, we, we need to filter by geo summary only if it's domestic. I didn't say geo summary. I didn't tell it that. It was able to recognize, you know, and parse that out and then do the filter based on the variable that it contains. And so now we're looking at top 10 operating airlines by domestic only, still combining United, right? It didn't break those out. It retained that. We can see here if we come up here and filter by domestic that we're talking about 452 million of the combined United. Yes, indeed, that's what it is. So, you know, it's getting the math right here. Pretty, pretty interesting here. Now, what if I'm going to do another analysis? What if I just want to say, um, great, thank you. <laughs> so sorry, I have to be polite. Uh, let's see, can you show me how passenger counts have changed over time? Okay, let's just kind of break now from that previous line of analysis. We're giving it a totally different question that has nothing to do necessarily with this line of, of inquiry. And so can it get it right? Can it break away and do a totally different kind of analysis? It's interesting, it's inferring some formats here on the activity period, right? It's then going about creating a time series data and it's displaying it as a plot, a time series plot in Python and here we go. Now, of course, we know what happened here, don't we? You know, this data plummets right around when, 2020. <laughs> We know exactly what happened. Almost goes all the way to zero, isn't it? But it doesn't really do anything. We see the season seasonal pattern. We see the huge drop off. And then it kind of tells us a little bit about that. And not only that, it infers. It actually goes a step beyond and says, first of all, there appears to be a seasonal pattern. Then it says, I also notice there's a significant drop off, most likely due to the COVID-19 pandemic, right? Wow. I mean, wow. It's finding seasonality. It's finding major outliers and doing research, not necessarily research per se. It isn't that it's researching anything. It's that its large language model that it has built from training data up to September 2021 is enough for it to go in and find the reason for that big drop in passenger count in 2020. So this to me is why this is totally groundbreaking. I mean, I have never seen anything like this. I've been in business intelligence for over a decade. I worked for Tableau for many, many years. I teach people all the, around the world how to analyze data. And I have never seen a tool like this. I can just interact with this in everyday human language, you know, using the power of NLP, using the power of these transformers put together to create after some training, some amazing amounts of insights based on a massive corpus of text, also now critically using this code interpreter plugin that's able to import the data, create Python code that takes my everyday language, converts that into code to respond to that and to create an output. I can modify charts and graphs, I can tweak them, I can modify the data even, combining values, right? I can show labels. I mean, I've just never seen anything like this. I mean, every step of the way, it created all this code Every step of the way, it outputs the data, and I'm, I'm blown away. Let's try one last thing. Um, let's say, can you output this, the charts? Um, let's just start with something simple. Can you output the line chart as a PDF along with a title and, and description of the key insight? Again, I don't think that the insight here is particularly groundbreaking. Everybody knows what happened <laughs> to travel in 2020. So I'm not sitting here saying like that's some kind of unexpected insight. I'm just saying we can do some basic descriptive analytics with remarkable ease, creating code, modifying code, importing data. Let's see if we can actually outport, uh, output the data as well into a file, perhaps. I don't know. I've never done it. 
I tried it before and it was getting hung up and had some issues, but it seems to be telling me that it's done now and let's see what it gives us. So you can see that it's uh, having some a PDF file that is generated. It's giving me even a hyperlink with it. Uh, let's click on it and see what happens. So here we go. I get a little drop down here. We're going to open it up and there's our chart. And, uh, you know, we maybe want to format this differently, but it tells me at the bottom here basically what's happening. I think I would need to go through and, and modify this, but I get my output in PDF form. I'm blown away. I mean, I was just having this conversation on Twitter today with someone I really respect in the data visualization world. His name's um, Nick Desbaratz. He's at, I think, uh, practicalreporting.com. And so we were talking about whether this... Uh, Technology, let me make sure I get the website right. Yeah, um, practicalreporting.com, exactly. He's a fabulous author, trainer, great conversationalist in the data world. I love interacting with him, really refreshing, you know, interesting thoughts, inclusive. And and so anyways, you know, his take on this was, well, you know, probably problematic and error prone, not quite groundbreaking. And I agree with him 100%. This is going to be error prone. You're going to have to cross check everything. You're going to have to really be careful. I think it's groundbreaking though. And I think the reason why, and that, I think that part of it, I think we disagree with, because like I said, I've just never seen anything where you can have this conversation with your data like this involving creation of code on the fly modifications involving the structure of the data itself, you know, modifying charts, going about making inferences or assumptions about the meaning of the data. Uh, you know, the way it inferred the uh, nature of the, the plummet there being due to COVID-19 and, and describing it there, inputting, outputting. I mean, just the whole, the whole workflow to me. I mean, this just makes basic data analysis anyway, something anyone can do, anyone. And that to me, like I said, I think that was the promise of SQL SQL back in the day in the 1970s when Donathan, Don, uh, Donald Chamberlain decided to create his partner, decided to create, you know, that query language that would be close to everyday language. I know it was the, the goal of the founders of Tableau when they were hoping to create a tool that anyone could play with to visualize their data. Those tools did a lot. I mean, let's be honest, we can't take anything away from it, but it didn't truly achieve this self-service, you know, this ability for anyone to interact with data. I think this, what I've just seen here, this comes closer to being able to do that. It really does. And so we'll see where it goes. You know, uh, I think the other side of this coin is that, you know, this isn't just remarkable and amazing uh, functionality capabilities. Look, it's terrifying. I mean, to think that a tool like this in alpha mode can do this kind of work, what else can it do? How else is it going to evolve and grow? Are we, situ are we dealing with a situation here very soon in which we have a super intelligence on this planet like we've never seen before? What does that mean for the human species? I mean, there are very real concerns about that. I don't mean to be chicken little, but I think we need to take this seriously. I think we need to have real conversations real quick about what are we doing with this technology. The cat's out of the bag. The Pandora's box is opened. It's going to be really hard to put it back in. So we're going to have to figure out some guardrails pretty quick because I'll tell you what I've seen so far. To me, yeah, it's groundbreaking. It's beyond that. It's mind-blowing. We're going to see where it's going to go. Well, we've got some more probably attempts to play around with this. We're going to see where else it goes. I'm going to try some new uh, tools and play around with it. There's another one here I want to uh, try out next where you can uh, browse the internet using ChatGPT. So much more functionality. It seems like it's coming out every week or even sometimes every day. So remarkable stuff. All right, everyone, take care. I hope you enjoy this little tutorial. I think you should be able to, I'm guessing, get access relatively soon. We'll see how that goes. Stay tuned, follow the data literacy channels. We'll keep you up to speed. If you really wanna kind of get up to speed with the basics, we have a course called ChatGPT Basics. We launched uh, a couple, well, let's see, a little over a month ago. It feels like it was already six months ago, a year ago, you know, in technology time these days. But ChatGPT Basics, walks you through some of the important warnings and caveats associated with the use of this new technology and also gives you some context into how to use it. We keep updating it with different ways to use chat GPT or chat GPT clones like GPT for all. There's a new one that came out recently that you can use, not based on GPT, based on Llama, the, the meta uh, models, family of models. So uh, anyway, we're going to continue updating it. I feel like I update it like every few days now. I go in there and modify it and add something new. So I'll keep doing that. All right, everyone. That's all for now. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.